<laughs> I'm I'm having a glass of wine, and I, and and this this um, this crazy guy's over here filming some stuff for television. Yeah. Yep. But he joined. Do you know what? He wants to come over and um, talk to you because you own some of my work. Can he come over and talk to you? Bring his camera. Yeah. Okay, you can say anything. You just tell what a wonderful guy I am. The one thing that drives James more than anything else is his intense sense of purpose. For him, it's not, uh, what will I do now? It's just, can I do everything that's flashing in my brain? Yeah. Will I have how the, much am I missing? Will I have the time to produce all the things that I'm thinking of right now? Yeah. And then while he's thinking of those things, more are coming in. I don't know if you've ever followed him around for a week, but the, the energy this man puts out and the dedication this man has for what he does is really, really, it's incredible. He, he paints because he loves painting. He loves it and he never stops because he has so much to give. And that little uh, dollar sign behind it, he has forgotten about that. I like it because he's not trying to make commercial, what do you say, commercial painting. He doesn't care, he wants to, you know, to say what he, he likes to do. And I think it's the most important thing. It's an interesting thing. As a friend of mine once said that hard work is no substitute for talent. On the other hand, talent without hard work is kind of a wasted effort. Uh, and James works extraordinarily hard. Um, we, we figure it's drugs. But, you know, it, could, it may well just be obsession. I think as a child, I always felt a little different than everyone. I think that uh, I felt I had a purpose. Always, I always felt I had a purpose for for um, for my life, and uh, I think mainly work. I mean, I've I've always worked. I have this great work ethic. I think that was instilled maybe by my mother or something. But I work all the time. That's probably what differentiates me. It makes me different than, than other artists because. I have this incredible work ethic where I'm working all the time. And I think that shows in my work and people can pick up on it because it's there, they can see it, they can feel it. So I think a lot of artists, they just slack off a little. They don't have that same drive, you know, which comes through in the art when you see it. I first met James when I was uh, performing at the small gallery on Granville Street called the Octavia Gallery. And it was actually for an art opening of James art and um, I had never even heard of him before that point and I was there singing with this uh, jazz piano player and it was we were having a lot of fun and uh, I had spoken to James briefly on the phone one time and I thought to myself this guy seems like he has a great sense of humor and he seems really cool and I really like the sound of his voice and I thought you know when I meet this person I think we're gonna be friends and so we went and performed at the opening and and we met there and we just hit it off we had a great time and he decided, I guess, after seeing me sing, that he wanted to uh, do a portrait of me, so, so um, 
the rest is history. I paint every day. I draw every day. Sometimes I, I might be able. To, I, I might be doing, uh, you know, one or two pieces a day. Sometimes I might sit down and, and I, I've I've drawn three or four hundred drawings and done ten or twenty paintings, you know. But then I don't sleep either. I mean, uh, sleep is so overrated. I think. I suppose I met James Picard ten or twelve years ago. I was introduced to him uh, through my wife, and. Uh, had an opportunity to visit him in his home, which at that time was also his studio. And I was pretty amazed at the, at the bulk and the volume of work that he'd done up, at that, up until that time. Uh, since then, James and I have become close friends and, and I've um, got a growing admiration for his work. I, I find that uh, it would be what I would call classic impressionist uh, style of painting in a sense that he stays true in a classic form to what was Impressionist art at the turn of the century. I think that's where the roots are and I think that he, he grows on that. So he's taken something that was already established, the Impressionist movement, and he's enhanced it through his efforts and through his continued efforts in that. There are artists perhaps who are dedicated, which to me means um, they have some sort of ulterior purpose almost that keeps them driving. Whereas for James, um, he can't turn it off. He doesn't sleep very much, he can't turn it off. There's stuff constantly happening inside of him that he has to get out on a piece of paper, on a piece of wood, uh, with a piece of metal. It doesn't matter what it is. He somehow has to get whatever's happening inside of him, outside of him. And it's such an amazing drive that he can't even shut it off to go to sleep. It's the imagery that gives me the energy to keep going. And it's this constant need to create. So, I mean, to, to be awake for two or three days is not uncommon, you know. But again, it's getting the imagery out that's, that's the most important thing. All this other stuff is just surface garbage that you have to deal with. You've got to blow your own horn, you've got to get out there and you've got to push yourself. And, and James does. And, he's, and you can tell that he's honest about his work. He likes what he's doing, he enjoys it, he loves the pressure, even though he might not think he does sometimes, I think he does. <laughs> and so he does, he, he can get out there, and because his work is becoming known, people are looking at it, people are seeing who he is. My painting has to stand on its own after I'm gone. It will long out-survive me. I'll be long dead before, you know, and, and it'll still be around. So each piece I do, I have to put a piece of myself in there and it has to be strong enough to survive without me. I can, I can no, no longer be there to defend it. If it does not achieve that, I mean, my standards are extremely high. And then I compare it to the masters. How does it compare to Picasso or Matisse or Cezanne or Monet or how does it compare? Is it up there? And if it is, then it's there. If not, I paint over it, I burn it, I destroy it, whatever. I mean, so yeah, it might seem like I'm egotistical, but it's only because this is what I do. When I was apprenticing with artists, they used to say to me, you know, you've got the talent, but everything must be sacrificed. And I used to think, yeah, okay, everything's sacrificed. I don't go Friday and have a few beers, then I'll stay at home and paint. You know, and then you get, you know, I mean, relationships. Everything is sacrificed. Nothing. The only thing, art comes before anything. Anything. That's probably why I'm a bachelor. Well, I, I, I certainly think uh, James's passion for his work is, is uh, contagious. Uh, you know, he, he, he is certainly a, a person who's driven. Um, driven, I'm not sure if it's by perfection or if it's by a love of art. There's so many artists that, that they work in one and they're constantly, they spend their whole life trying to master this one thing. And maybe it's because I put in the time, maybe it's because, uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm more talented, I, I have no idea. but. Certain, you know, working in oils all the time, I, I can't express the same way as I work in metal. There's certain imagery or, or need to create that it's not going to come out in that medium, so I need many mediums to work in. So that's why I, I 
run the gamut and I work in metal and clay and wood and sculpt, you know, as far as sculpting goes and then painting I mean watercolors and oils and pen and ink and acrylic and anything I can get my hands on you know um, it's the need it's that just that need to to create and and again but the more styles that you master or the more styles that you work in then the more doors that are open to you so the more you can create so again these images as they come you can get them out really fast i think one of the funniest things about james is that he endlessly produces material you you, you end up and you see recurrent themes for instance um, this cat, which is on the most recent issue of Two Chairs, was one of, at the time, 35 cats, and now about 80 cats that are all works on paper. Um, I don't know what the deal is with these cats, but whatever it is, it means that James has wound up doing 80 fully realized drawings of cats. Um, he goes on a tear. Once he's on that tear, there's nothing that's going to stop him. Uh, and you can't put him on that's the other thing. With, with James, you, you're looking at a guy who will get the idea, run with it. You can give him ideas and about three weeks later something will occur, but you can't basically say, gee, James, draw a tree. Ain't gonna happen. I was amazed about his paintings, so I had to find the artist. And I wasn't disappointed. After that, we have had a wonderful Friendship. He is really the person that gives me back and forth to continue my own painting. Because if I don't have a new painting, when he sees me or comes to my place, I get balled out. No, 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 no. I had no, no, no. a visit of my friends. He hasn't done my portrait. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, although I have to say, when I first saw the portrait, we sat and talked. I realized that I was going to be able to get that portrait. But I was going to be able to get that portrait. I guess I've always been. I think I was always visual. Before, I mean, I was always. Uh, Look at things. I, I remember actually this is a little anecdote. When I was a kid, I remember driving in the back, I was in the back seat of the car, and I'd look down the road and I would see things and they'd look flat, they looked two dimensional. And I used to think we we were gonna hit it. You know, it was just the, the it looked like a big canvas, it looked like a big picture. I had kind of a, a bad childhood, so I, I I think I probably choose not to remember everything. But I, I guess I always drew and doodled. And what I used to do, because I always getting shit all the time uh, for drawing on the walls and stuff, I, I would always draw inside the cupboard or go inside the cupboard and draw up on the top and the uh, bottom of the drawers so I could never be found. And uh, or my, one of my favorite spots was in the door and the hinges uh, on the door when you open the door and the hinges. So you draw in there. I could always like do all these full length drawings in there. So I guess I always did it. I guess I was always creative. But when I was a teenager, I guess then I started to, I had, this, I had a great ability to do this. Maybe practice, I don't know what it was. But I could see things I found that other people couldn't and I could shade the way other people couldn't. I always did poor in school. And uh, my father said, uh, you should be a lawyer, a doctor, to go into business or you only had to work in a factory, so I go to work in a factory just to spite him. And I got laid off when I went to school. All of a sudden, I got all these A's because I found I could, I could do these things like I never realized I could do them. All of a sudden, I was in an, I, I guess I was never encouraged or supported when I was younger, but I always did it. And when I finally went to art school, like when I was about 18, 19, then I had encouragement, and that's when everything took off. Because then I was in this world, and I was introduced to it. Just a piece of cake for me too, and I just got I just got off on it. Well, I guess one of the things that sticks out in my mind uh, from one of my first meetings with James was uh, how approachable he was, uh, and he 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 wasn't uh, standoffish at all. He was very, uh, you know, he was he was really willing 
to uh, explain to me who was a you know a lay person who's really willing to explain to me w how he goes about um, working on a particular subject or or painting or piece and uh, for me to be led into that circle of thinking or that framework of thinking was really uh, special. He's intense when he's doing his work. Um, but he, he, no, t I don't think he's a, a stereotype type person that you can say that's his slot and that's where he's in and that's where he's staying. I don't, no, I don't, to me he's not in, in that type of format at all. Um, I think there's a lot of sides to him. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why he is so successful. A lot of it is when I'm done, a lot of times when I'm painting, I don't even know, well, I mean I know what I'm doing, but my mind is working so fast and it's just a matter of trying to keep my hand, keep up with it and a lot of times I'll, I'll even set up two or three pieces and I, I just have to jump because the images are just coming so quickly and then when I'm done, it's at that point when I sit down and I can observe and look and see what I've accomplished. That's when I really know what, I'm, what, I've, what I've done while I'm doing it. Sometimes I don't even think about what I'm doing. I'm just so busy concentrating on the next image coming in and quickly getting out the old one. visit of my friend and he told me to sit still which is not really what I like to and in a minute he did a portrait of me and here it is and I love it. It was a lot of fun sitting for the portrait because at first I was naturally nervous but it became very much a session of talk. We'd sit down usually with a big bag of Doritos um, on the floor and it would be anything from Kurt Vonnegut to art to music. And they'd be very long two or three hour discussions. And while we're doing it, James would be sketching away. And at some points he would get up to actually go to the easel and the other times he'd just be sitting there and um, watching. It was fun. I went to, this is a very interesting thing because James does not uh, paint portraits from photographs. He actually has people come and do live sittings, which is really exciting. And to me, it's like, it felt like something out of the 18th century, you know? And we sat and we talked and he'd get me going on any number of topics that interested me and I'm very talkative anyway. So, you know, we'd just talk back and forth and laugh our heads off and stuff and then he'd paint. So I expected this sort of bubbly, lively kind of, you know, uh, perspective in the painting. And when I saw it, it scared me. It was like, whoa, how did you get that out of what we've been through, <laughs> you know? but. Uh, yeah, no, it was a very exciting process. I liked it a lot. Well, for the most part, see, because, I mean, uh, you know, it's funny because I can walk into a room and see someone, and, and it could be a group of people, and, uh, and a couple months later I can walk in, I can notice who's got a haircut. It's, it's just a visual thing. So I always have this visual. It's not like photographic memory, but I store these. They, every image I have, it gets filed away. So I don't use live. I, I like if I'm painting a portrait. I like to work from the live model because it's that energy. And if that person is right there, you can pull it out. I talk a lot. I'll converse with them and, and try and pull something out of them, which you can't do from a photograph, obviously. Um, but for the most part. I just paint from from memory or from from imagery in my in my head because it is it's so clear. You know, a lot of times when I look at something, perhaps it's just been because I I've trained as an artist for so long that I look at something and as soon as I see I, I immediately if I look at your face I'm looking at, at tones and 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 color and I'm seeing everything and it, it all just starts. I, you know, sometimes I feel like um, six million dollar man. What was his name? 
Steve Austin. Because it kind of goes ch -ch 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 -ch, and you get that all of a sudden your tone and color and, and it all sort of starts, this is how I, I look at things. Even looking down the street, I start, okay, there's their eyes, where's my perspective? It just, I automatically set it up as a, as a, a painting or a shot or, or whatever it is and it stays with me. And it's just a matter of getting back and getting it out. Look at this, she's so relaxed. Look at that. A couple of lines and you, you know, you see she's happy, relaxed. It's really good. Nice. No, 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 no. No, he hasn't done my portrait. Um, although I have to say, when I when I first saw the portrait that he did of Sylvia, uh, I, I I realized immediately that he had done more than just taken a picture of her, which is what I always associated with art. That it would just be a realistic photograph, but not done with uh, with a camera. That it, somebody would take some paint and, and an easel, and what I would end up with is a realistic work. Uh, so what he did instead was something that I, I, I guess it's Picasso-like. On one side he's captured one mood of her and it immediately appealed to me because that's what I've seen in her many times and I was surprised that that would come through in a work of art. Um, the other side is her sterner side and that I wasn't surprised but I, 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 I thought <laughs> he's captured a vulnerable part of her that uh, it would have taken him a bit of time to bring that out in her and then it shows a great deal of sensitivity in him that he could see that and then talent, of course, to put that onto canvas. Yeah. And it was after that that I said, I'd like to meet this guy. Of which you made an incredible meal. That I made an incredible meal, yes. yeah. I think a lot of people um, are quite surprised when they eventually uh, see the portrait. You, what, I, I never let people see the portrait while I'm working on it, that's my rule. So when we start I'm doing my sketches, no one sees it until the final product. To, to tell them to finish the portrait. And um, they're usually surprised and they usually sit with it for a while and then they, they realize that the power that it has. And a lot of times that's when they realize everything I've captured. They're usually surprised low because it does resemble them, but it's when they're alone and they've got it back in their, their house or their you know, dwelling or whatever and it's hanging on the wall and they look at it and that's when they realize, I think, what I've actually done and that's where the, I've actually pulled something out of them and transferred it onto the canvas. That's when they, they get blown away. This has scared people, this painting. It's very interesting. When I first saw it, it scared me. I didn't, it took me a while to figure out what, how I felt about it, actually, because, you know, when I first saw it, it, it seemed so dark. And my persona is so bubbly and extroverted and stuff, but he really tapped into the other, the other side of me, and it took me by surprise a little bit at first. I didn't realize it was so visible, but maybe it's not, you know. <laughs> but uh, people people have seen this and freaked out. My mother hates it, of course. You know, she wants me to look pretty all the time. But uh, I kind of look a bit like my dad with a wig in this picture, which is kind of interesting because I don't actually really favor him. But, but it really brought out a lot of the sort of darker, more intense side of me, which I like, I like a lot. When I'm doing watercolors, I tend to draw. I draw all the time anyway, so I tend to draw. What I like to do is, is I like to buy uh, tons of paper and I'll just draw. And these are all potential paintings, perhaps, or they'll get there. I mean, even right now, I've probably got about 50 or 60 drawings that are waiting to be painted. Um, uh, and same with the watercolor, I guess. I, I, I tend to cut down my time, so I paint right on the... I just use f half the time straight from the tube, or if there's mixing to be done, it's done right on the paper. I actually uh, collect the cards in uh, an unusual media. Um, this is a Picard drawn on a napkin. I think this is about a three-beer drawing. Um, here we have uh, a coaster, and in fact on that we have a, a girl. Uh, here we have a drawing of me, apparently, um, which was drawn on a little piece of notepad. We have these littering our house. Um, whenever you go out for a beer with James, um, you basically, if you're smart, you grab everything off the table because there's undoubtedly a lot of Picards lying there. Yeah, oh yeah, he's given me a couple of those. He, James has given me a couple of his little cocktail napkin sketches and signed them and dated them and everything. It's really cute. So I've got them in my little collection. Uh, also, we've, we've seen him looking around starting to fidget 
and yes. we know what he wants. And a few moments later, he's got a napkin, which we've yes, we framed on occasion, uh, a piece of paper, anything. And it's not doodling, it's drawing. And he's looking around and looking down and looking around and looking down. And occasionally he'll be looking at me and his hands are moving. Yeah. And I can't believe that he's creating something without looking at it. Maybe it is uh, something that, that's beyond him, his, his ability to control. Because there is certainly, uh, maybe that's what talent is. Maybe talent is what you can't develop. It's got to be what's already there. And that seems to be what's happened a number of times where we've seen him starting to make sketches without looking at the paper, but he's looking at the object that he's sketching. Occasionally, there is no object that he can see that he's sketching. It's just coming out of something that we're talking about. And he's, I guess, visualizing it somewhere inside his mind and producing it with his hands. I think Matisse said once that there's no room for error as soon as your pen touches that paper. A lot of people don't understand that. I mean, it is. You're risking everything. People don't understand that. I mean, there's no, there's no, literally no room for error. There's, you have to know exactly what you're doing. You know, when you have that imagery in your head, you have to have total control over every medium I work in. That's why I mean, I work so hard. You have to have mastery. You have to have control over it. So as soon as you touch the brush, or the pen touches the canvas, or, or the pen touches the paper, the brush touches the canvas, you have full control over what you're doing, and so you're free to let your creativity flow. Most artists don't have that. And that's why I think most art is boring. once I had someone not like what I did but they were extremely uh, evil <laughs> I don't know how I put it they're a very ugly person very pretentious and I painted them very I painted how I saw them you know which they didn't like but for the most part no one's ever complained about anything It intrigues me. I, I look into the eyes of some of those darker portraits and I just see an incredible history in that character. And I think, of course, a lot of that is because that's James's history that you're seeing through the eyes of that painting. The way I live my life is very difficult. If I, w if, I, if, I, if I was never in this space, I don't think I could live with myself just because this is how I live. I can't have a roommate. People say, well, do you ever get lonely? I've got, I've got 30,000 roommates in here. You know, I've got 2,000 people I live with because each one of these pieces, they're like my children. They're born. I mean, they have an energy and an essence all their own. They have a personality all their own. So I'm never alone. I mean, every, every room I walk in is just packed with people. That's the way it feels. So, I mean, I, I live alone. I, I prefer it that way. I don't know if there's a lot of people that can... People like it at first because it's interesting, because it's different. But I think eventually they just think it's just too bizarre. There's a painting I did before I went away to New York to teach. And um, I finished it. It was just... It just hit. Everything was image came I sat down bam I did it and it worked so well but again it's so fresh and the feeling was so good I felt so great at achieving this so quickly and then I had to leave for New York and I, and I missed her I really missed this painting I was I was I was pining for this painting and when I came back even I, I would have it in the, in the living room and then I would move it if I was cooking in the kitchen I, I'd feel her I wanted her presence with me so I'd I'd move her into the kitchen and then I'd go to bed and I, I can't sleep and so I'd move her into the bed and just prop her up there at the end of the bed so I could so I knew she was right there. It felt very comforting. 
Do you know it's funny because someone said to me once, they said, oh, do you ever get, you know, lonely being living alone? I got, I got 5,000 roommates. I mean, each of these pieces has their own. And I mean, thank God I have a lot of energy because they steal a piece of it every time. And uh, they're alive, all of them. I live with so many people. It's phenomenal. I could never live with any more, anyone else. It's just too much. Oh, I saw that in his house, and I was in love right away. I said, can I have it? So, okay. I really like it. It's a lot of expression there, if, you know. So, but it's different. It's uh, something uh, you don't see very, very often. I need stimulation. I get bored extremely easily. I cannot sit down. I can't sit. I mean, I've, I've had dates where I've sat down. They go, sit still. Can, can you not sit through a movie? No, I can't because I'm bored. I'm bored with everything. I, I need that kind of, you know, I'm not a nine to five type person who has nothing to do. So in some ways, it's, I mean, it's very difficult when you, it's all consuming. So everything takes second place to it. Everything. So it's difficult to be in a relationship because immediately, you know, am I number one? No, you'll always be number two. Actually, you're probably number three because I've got kids. You know, so that and that's the way it is. So to find someone that can understand that, it's next to impossible. Simplicity shows how gorgeous a person he is. No problems, no money line problems. It's a little bit wake up there. Uh, lifeline, perfect. So I'm going to live to an old age, am I? Artist, causes. It's a good hand. When I say that James is. Um, best work is ahead of them. Um, it, it's in distinction to an awful lot of artists um, who burn out at 22. Uh, they have one great insight and then that's it. It's over. Uh, in James's case he's laying down a foundation of work in a variety of styles um, that I think is going to lead to a final mature style. Probably he'll still paint three different ways, um, but my bet is that he'll paint less. Sometimes I look back and I can't believe I've done as much as I've done. And a lot of times, even when I go to New York, so I go to these competitions sometimes and they, they see my, they get my portfolio, my CV, all my, you know, I don't have my date of birth on it. And they're always expecting some old guy to come in, the, you know, and I'll show them, they'll, they'll ask me if I'm the assistant or if I'm the one who's helping, you know, and I said, no, I'm James Picard. And they go, whoa, because they don't expect someone at my age to have accomplished as much I ha as I have accomplished. Um, I mean, I just work all the time. It just engulfs my whole entire life. So, I mean, I'm just always working. So sometimes I stop and I look around and I can't, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that I've done as much as I've done, yet at the same time I feel this constant pressure of time because my whole entire life will go by and I will not still be able to achieve all, everything I need to achieve because on a daily basis I have to work and every day uh, if there's, you know, if I don't get all 10 paintings out then they flip over to the next day and all of a sudden I get 15 to do the next day and it's a continual, you know, so I'll go through my whole life and I won't achieve everything I need to achieve, which is very frustrating. There's a lot of artists who I, who, who I know who gained success when they were younger. And I always thought, oh, 
shit, you know, I, I, why did I have to like wait on tables all the time and constantly struggle and struggle and struggle? I think if I had been accept accepted immediately, it would have been because I fit into the norm. But I, I'm still not accepted. People don't know how to react to my work because I work in all different mediums. And because, I mean, I, I paint in oils and acrylic and watercolor and pen and ink and draw. And I've, I've got thousands of pieces and I sculpt in metal and clay and wood. And I just continually go. Again, it's that constant drive, that creative drive. I think I have more passion than anyone I've ever met. In terms of his, his art, I mean, he's constantly being ri written up in the uh, local papers and media. Uh, and it seems as though this is a... Uh, a crest of uh, or a wave starting to build and uh, you know James, James is on the wave and it's building behind him and so you know within you know six months a year five years down the road I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of uh, James Picard I don't think that success will will ultimately affect James's work I don't think um, any material type things can affect the work, because the work comes from a passion. James's work comes from a passion. I have no idea where James's art will end up. It could end up anywhere. He's a bit, he's a bit uh, widespread, I think, in his sort of sphere of influence at present. He's got people interested in his art from all over the world, um, from what I can tell. And he could end up in museums somewhere. He could end up in pawn shops. <laughs> And you don't forget them. I mean, I can visualize them. I've been in his house a few times, but a lot of those paintings I take away with me and I can see them clearly even when I'm not there. Of course, the problem is I want to acquire all of them. I have something to leave behind, you know. Um, and when I paint, each one of my paintings has to stand the test of time because I am not going to be here to defend them. So they have to stand on their own. They have to have that power, that energy on their own to stand there and last, you know, stand the test of time. That When I finish a painting, that's basically how I, I see if I've succeeded in that whole problem solving is can it stand the test of time? Can it stand there without me and be just as powerful and have that energy? Have I taken that and captured it and sealed it with that last brush stroke and there it is. And people are 100 or 200 years from now are gonna go, well, just like a Van Gogh painting, you stand in front of it and you just go, I can feel this, it's so bizarre. You know, you can feel what he painted, the, the emotion that he put into it. That's what art's all about and that's what I'm striving for. What did you think of my show? I think it was marvelous. Yeah. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. And pretty soon, you've got to have another yeah, one. we'll do it again. And I've got to find the studio. Yeah, and get you painting so, again. Yeah. And maybe you could do a portrait of me. I would love to. <laughs> well, that would be in the nude. Okay. <laughs> 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 I just see this thing just the way it's going. Whoa! There we go. There we go. Can I put an R rating on this one? You know, he did. He wrote most of this. We, we, were, we just had barely enough time to memorize it before he came in. I don't think he can control it. The drive is just there, and the creativity is just there. It just happens. I, where it comes from, I don't know. 
Jim, ich wünsche dir alles Gute für deine Zukunft. Ich sehe schon dich als große, große Artist und äh, ich wünsche dir wirklich alles, alles Bestes. Uh, I've often thought the best thing that could happen to James is a fire. Um, but not because it's bad work, but rather because it suddenly means that this becomes really collectible. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I see either a fire um, or possibly um, people just buying up a lot of his work uh, over the course of the next, next few years. Sometimes I, I wish I was normal, you know, because I could actually go to sleep. But a lot of times, even if I'm exhausted, I lay in bed and the imagery's still there. I can't sleep if my life depends on it. Oh, okay. Okay. No, say something really good about me because it's going, it's, he's taping right now, okay? Okay, here we go. I'm putting you, I'm putting your, uh, the phone right to the mic. Okay, go. Hello, I'm a friend of James Picard. Uh, he's an egomaniac. Bastard as well as being a drunk. But he's also talented and obsessed with his work, obsessed with his art, and that's what really matters. Okay, what did you say? He's laughing. What did you say? been done. It's passe. Stop boring the shit out of me. Do something original. If you can't, go back and get your job back at fucking Chevron and pump gas because you're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that. <laughs>